Broadcasting, direct from Studio 12. You're watching Live with Bruce Gregory and At Jazz. Facebook, what is up today? My name is Bruce Gregory, and you exactly have tuned in to live with me, and uh, we are at Jazz. I hope you're doing good on this Friday afternoon, evening here in April, April 10th, as it were, 2020, 2020. Uh, who would have ever thought we'd be saying that? 2020, I remember that was just a thought or a gleam in the sky. Uh, I hope everybody's doing okay. I myself am doing fine, fine, fine. Uh, we have uh, some great things coming up on the program today and uh, some new things that are um, coming up for next week, at the end of this week and next week, and uh, some good, exciting news. So I'm pretty happy to be um, to seeing what's up. What's up, Jeff? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, man. Thanks for coming on, brother. Good to see you. <laughs> Yeah, man. Bruce Lee, one of my heroes, man, growing up. I used to love Bruce Lee, you know. Uh, you know, I always aspired to uh, be as as fit as him, but uh, it didn't work out that way for me, man. Uh, but uh, I love that. I love that stuff. Um, but, yeah, so I have to thank my sponsors, uh, you know, uh, everybody who uh, is uh, giving us big shout-outs. Razor's Edge, Cabinets, they... Um, they keep us powered here in the studio and uh, all the the funky cabinets. You might see this brown one behind my shoulder. Uh, that's a custom cabinet made by uh, Jeff Fleischer uh, over, I want to say down, over in Wisconsin. And uh, it's a great combo. Uh, not only that, uh, you can remove an acoustic image, Clara's head in and out. And I did a little spiel about that way back. Uh, and uh, but I'll bring some more stuff out and you can check that out at some point uh, if you're a musician you're into that uh, of course GHS strings always keeping things real keeping the wires on the guitar and the good ones Greg Ord in Connecticut if you're out there listening shout out to you brother G uh, hope you're still doing well and playing I'm sure you are and uh, of course uh, we wouldn't be anywhere without Benedetta guitars we have Jackson Evans coming up uh, probably going to be on the show the week after next, we're going to try to get him on, uh, and he's going to talk about everything good in guitars, particularly with what's happening at Benedetto these days, and uh, and how they're kind of doing things. Um, whoa, what's up there? Uh, how they're doing things and uh, and uh, like that. So uh, stay tuned for that one. And of course, my good friend Jeffrey Ding. I'm going to try to get Jeffrey on the show. Jeffrey is not in the United States. So uh, we're going to try to to do that. We we might be able to, but I know there's a time difference from where we are and where he is. But I'm going to put it out to him. Hopefully he'll come on and uh, and talk a little bit about what he's got going on with all his audio and cables and like that. Uh, of course, my man, Mr. Peter Hendrickson. And uh, Peter is going to be on the show Monday coming up. Uh, we were able to work... Uh, uh, actually, I was able to work on trying to get uh, our Skype connection with Ecamm working correctly. Uh, that was a big challenge for us. And, um, and uh, you know, of course, we have Skype working fine. We have Ecamm working fine. But to get them to talk together uh, is really where the, the money is for us here. And uh, so we got that hopefully resolved. Fingers crossed. And uh, so Pete's going to be on the show on Monday. To talk about his amps, uh, if you're a Hendrickson amp fan, Jimmy Bruno, if you're out there listening, I know you are, and I know a bunch of people. I know that Barry Green, he's going to be on the show next Thursday. He's a Benedetto amp user, but they're made by Pete. Uh, if you didn't know that, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, Pete, but I don't really care. <laughs> uh, and um, like that, so uh, check him out on Monday. 
coming up tomorrow's show, we have Ken Laster. He's going to be on tomorrow. Uh, he's the Hartford Jazz guy. He's going to talk to us all about what's happening in the uh, the condition of jazz uh, in Hartford and uh, what what's going to be happening with our shutdown and all that kind of good stuff. And he'll have some good updates for us. I know that the Hartford Jazz Society has a whole slew. They have Paul Brown Monday nights, and they have a you know the the jazz crews, and then they have a whole series of events uh, that are scheduled. Uh, and um, I know that they were working with Firehouse 12 in New Haven, Connecticut, and they have gone to a virtual uh, show model given uh, what we got going on here in the United States. However. Uh, Ken will be, um, he definitely will be talking to us more about what the Hartford Jazz scene in terms of the shows he's put on is going to look like for the summer. And we'll probably talk a little bit jazz. Ken's a guy that comes to my Wednesday night at the Half Door in Hartford uh, religiously, he and his wife. So if you're out there, Mr. Laster, uh, God bless. And, um, you know, we're sending out all our love to you. He actually has a show on WWUH. I don't know what time, but we'll talk about that. I think he broadcasted today at 10 a.m. I don't know if that's the same time every Friday morning, but we can ask him that question if you're interested in listening to some really good jazz. I'm sure he put some, uh, a good program on, and um, you know we're going to talk a little bit about maybe some of his favorite records and recordings and things, what he likes to do. Daniel Ramos, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. I'm glad to see you on, man. Good to see you. And my dearest sympathies to you and your family. I know that uh, you guys are going through a loss uh, this week uh, with your mom. And so, uh, you know, sending all my love out. And if folks, if you're out there, send us well wishes to Daniel and his family. And Ephron, if you're out there, I know you You got the same, um, you know, same thing. And I know safe travels to wherever you're going uh, these days. So um, we're sending out our wishes to the Ramos family of course, on everything. and uh, But I am here, and I'm going to play some tunes. And um, I don't know if you want to hear something, send me a note. But kind of feeling in Charlie Parker mood tonight. Thank you. 
correct the tune is segment by charlie parker uh written in about first recorded 1949 uh charlie uh most likely stole those chord changes from another tune but that's what it was and uh he recorded that he had a lot of licensing and publishing issues recording back in those days for whatever reason it didn't seem like miles davis had any of that problem but charlie parker did and um you know, uh, of course, uh, he rewrote a lot of tunes like Honeysuckle Rose and kind of reworked the uh, the chord changes and all that. But Segment was written in 1949, and such a such a great tune it is. Um, yeah, right. I know, I know. It's a it's a definitely definitely a great tune, Gianni. I I uh, I, I I do agree. Yeah. Um. So the loop pedal, okay, yeah. So um, I did a I did a program, Johnny, on um, uh, my one of my websites, the solo artist. But send me a note offline. I use um, I use the Ditto, uh, the TC Electronic, the Ditto Mini, the little small one. And um, the reason I use that one, uh, there are a lot of different loop pedals, and um, you know, once you get used to the start and the stop of that one, you know, it's a one click start and a two click stop. Uh, you know, that's the only thing about it that can be complicated. But the thing I dig about that pedal uh, and all the TC products, and you know, I, 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 I actually work with them a little bit on different kinds of products, but that one is great because the footprint's super small and uh, it's really, really clean. You know, I hope it transfers through the audio I'm sending out uh, you know, in the live feed, but um, I like it uh, in terms of its quality and its convenience. And you know, man, there's I've had MIDI loopers and different kinds of stuff, and I've had them all and really expensive ones. But I feel like that one is like, you know, for the money. I think they're about fifty or sixty dollars. You know, you could probably you know you know secure one, and uh, you can have a couple of them. And I I probably do. I probably have three or four in different cases and bags and you know and I'll open a case up and say, oh that's where my other looper is um you know and uh but on the solo artist toolkit the the program I put together is three parts right now uh and there's going to be a fourth and a fifth part coming out but the first three parts uh are all about um different versions of comping and kind of doing what I do in a live setting in some ways and um Barry Green is going to be on the program Thursday, and uh, he has a VHX site as well. And Barry's a great burning player out of Florida. And uh, what I've seen Barry do is he he uses Ableton and he has uh, you know all his drum loops, and he loops you know his changes into the computer, and uh, you know he's got the drum track along with it, and that's a cool burning setup. You know, for my money, though, um, the thing I dig about the TC, and I'm glad you asked, is that, um, you know, I can do it in the studio. I can record in the Pro Tools or any DOW, or I can take it on a gig. So it's it's very 
applicable to a lot of different kinds of situations. It's not the most ideal. I'd love to have like a drum track and stuff, but a lot of times I'll use the guitar or I'll use clicks. And um, there was a tune I was playing earlier, which is called tripula tripleting. Tripleting, that's a hard tune to say. So it kind of works like this. So the song, uh, song tripleting, and uh, so back to your question, Johnny. I, um, you know, I like the fact that um, you know I can create little different kinds of things like that off of uh, you know just that little motif, you know. <laughs> you have Pat Martino do that a lot, particularly. Uh, in, in later years, uh, you know, after he did some of his, his fusion and post-fusion and it got back kind of into bebop, he would do like those single note kind of lines too, you know. And of course, we know my man Ingve does it all the time with his single note, you know. That kind of stuff, uh, which is, you know, it's just another way. Tom Lippincott, another guy that's gonna be on the show. Um, great, great player. Um, He's a real big believer in uh, playing, uh, you know, knowing all your scales and single strings in every string. And, you know, when I studied with Paul Gilbert, it was kind of like, you know, that, you know, you know, that, and then, you know, really kind of pattern based repetitive guitar playing. But, um, but it really helps you kind of see the instrument. And, um, you know, the TC is a, is a, is a great one. Yeah. 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 It, they, they make, they make really really rock solid stuff you know i have a i have so many you, you probably can see over in this corner is my pedal area and and probably 90 percent of all that is uh is tc stuff you know and i have some other vintage things and i don't use a lot of pedals you know um i i really don't and uh you know i have an axe effects and a bunch of different kinds of things and you know i use it for recording in different applications but for the most part like today, I'm, I'm running the Benedetto and uh, I'm running through a Hendrickson, you know, which is really kind of stock, a stock amp, but just with a custom setup. And then I use an acoustic image head that too, that that I really like, you know, that uh, is, is a great, great box as well. So Tommy Ferdon, what's up, brother? Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, Tommy Ferdon, uh, Barry Green is going to be on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, he's going to Skype in and... Uh, and folks, if you haven't uh, talked to or seen Barry Green, uh, he's just an amazing, amazing guitarist and teacher. Uh, and uh, I subscribed to his site myself and learned a lot from him. And um, so we're really fortunate that he agreed to take his time 
and uh, he's super busy. I know he, he teaches at one of the universities in Florida and mo possibly a couple. And he has a whole host of private students and all that as well, too. But uh, he's, a, he's a great, great, great dude. Um, Ken Laster, what's up, brother? Good to see you, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Absolutely. You know it. You know it. And uh, just like I mentioned, if you weren't here earlier, um, Ken Laster will be on the show tomorrow at 6.30, and uh, and we'll talk everything we know about Hartford Jazz and the State of the Union, as it were, uh, in the whole the whole nine yards with that. So, uh, so like that. But I'm going to play another tune. Uh, and uh, somebody asked me for giant steps, but, you know.
<laughs> yeah, Giant Steps, John Coltrane, written in 1959, released in 1960, uh, and uh, I played that tune specifically, uh, someone asked me about it because uh, yesterday I was talking a little bit about um, Giant Steps and John Coltrane, and uh, I think I played all blues. <laughs> yeah um and uh i was talking a little bit about the time period of that time where coltrane was spending his his days recording you know kind of blue with miles and his evenings working on giant steps and naima and countdown and what a harmonic difference around those two you kind of see you know um the real spacious modal kind of thing and then the ultra crazy you know harmonies that coltrane was thinking about but um but really kind of interesting you know interesting time period and, uh, and like that so um so but i am going to play a miles tune uh and um i think i'm going to play a miles tune i might play another tune uh i think i'm going to actually i think i might save my miles tune for tomorrow when ken's on because I know he's a big Miles fan, and uh, and we can talk a little bit about that tune and what he knows about it. But check this one out. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
kitchen sink in there uh but uh yeah just friends uh by john clanner i had forgotten someone actually asked me to play that tonight i think i played it earlier in the week i can't remember uh but uh 1931 uh great tune uh you gotta love just friends uh such a fun tune to play on uh of course um before i go we're just about out of time uh give a quick shout out um to if you haven't been out there to my website, uh, www.brucegregori.vhx.tv, 
uh, out there uh, is a bunch of different programs. There's a solo artist toolkit. There's three versions, I believe, out there now, uh, and a couple more coming. Uh, I know there's a unit, uh, a unit, a lesson on Unit 7 that uh, just was getting finished up today, so that'll be out there. So if you dig that tune, uh, it kind of pings a little bit off the West Montgomery version, uh, smoking at the half note. And uh, the cool thing about this particular site is you can purchase by the month, you can purchase by the year, you can buy, you can rent, uh, and uh, you can subscribe to the site um, if you like. And uh, if you don't like it, you can just bail out and say, look, I'm not interested in it, uh, and I don't want to do it. There's also another option. If you click on the private VOD, uh, you can go out there, and uh, you got a few different other options that uh, kind of uh, walk you through what's happening uh, on that end of the site as well. So... Uh, lots of good stuff there. Uh, if you um, if you haven't or you're thinking about it, uh, please consider donating to my Patreon page. It's Bruce Gregory. No, it is www.patreon.com slash Bruce Gregory. I didn't major in speaking. Just have to let you know that. Uh, and uh, uh, that site uh, is purely just contributions for all the music that I create and uh, you know it basically is a crowdfunding kind of setup and uh, helps me to keep making all the free content and YouTube and all that other stuff and of course you can check out my YouTube channel if you are interested in any of these shows they are all posted on YouTube the same night believe it or not uh, I, I strive to make that happen and you can go back and say well what the hell did he say and uh, Sometimes I get emails and notes from people saying, you know, did you really say that? Yeah, man, I really did say that. So, um, and did you really play that poorly? <laughs> More importantly, let's see that, you know, let's see that again, you know. So it's a digital imprint from now until the end of the time, and that's just the way it is. Uh, Pat Metheny said um, one time to me that he is a very, very not a big fan of YouTube and recorded public performances. And uh, so much so that when he was recording the um, the album and the series he did with, uh, the album he did, I think he just did one. He might have done two. I think it's just one with uh, Jim Hall. Uh, Jim loved to record live. That's That was his thing. And I do as well. I like playing live and I like recording live. And But Matheny, uh, Pat, not at all, you know, not his thing. And, um, and he, he's a little bit more on the, you know, trying to make things just perfect. Although I don't really get that from when I hear him play, I feel like it's very organic, but you know, that's just the way in his comfort zone. And, uh, but, uh, he's not a big fan on uh, YouTube kind of things, but be that as it may, uh, you know, this is what we're at. So once again, I give a shout out to Razor's Edge, Speak Friends Cables, GHS Strings, Benedetto Guitars, Hendrix Amplifiers, Peter Hendrickson on the show tomorrow at 6.30 if you want to talk or know anything about great amplifiers for bass, guitar, and any other acoustic instruments. By far, in my opinion, some of the best amplifiers, if not the best amplifiers for that kind of uh, application on the planet, and they're really, really light and powerful is what I dig. And Peter's going to talk about a couple new products, I think, that he's got working on. So we look forward to seeing him. Uh, he's on the show Monday, I'm sorry. And Ken Laster tomorrow uh, to talk about the condition of Hartford and where we're headed with jazz uh, from today going forward. And uh, so please have your questions ready. I'm sure Ken um, Ken's really excited about, you know, just talking about jazz. I know he's an enthusiastic listener and he has a podcast on WWUH, and he'll tell us more about that if you feel like tuning into that um, as well. But once again, thanks very much, folks. Um, I, myself, am out, and I will see you tomorrow here with Ken, 6.30 p.m., live with Bruce Gregory. Peace. Bruce Gregory, video on demand www.brucegregorio.vhx.tv